The bonus round is back here on GT with Glenn Schofield, Shane Satterfield, and Garnet Lee. Uh, we are talking about what we're expecting from the industry in 2013, which hopefully is going to be a big year with uh, new platforms announced and uh, new game experiences. Let's turn now to Xbox 360, which uh, you know has, has done a lot of, I think, good things in 2012 in terms of you know broadening out to uh, you know offer a lot of entertainment apps and things like that on the box. They've got Gears of War Judgment coming out in March, which uh, is you know a big title for the platform. Garn, let me start with you. What do you think 2013 looks like for Xbox? I mean, everyone seems to be saying this is the year when we're hopefully going to hear about the next Xbox and we're going to get uh, more insight into where they're going. Um, I mean, they sort of have to get there, I think, sure. because it's uh, we're not hearing a lot about other big Xbox games. Hey, by all accounts, haven't we been thinking it's going to happen for the past two years? So right. it's got to happen in 2013, right? And the question is, is it going to be a short run where it's, you know, GDC for developer announcement and E3 for partner and retail announcement and then a holiday launch in 2013. And if it is, what comes out at that holiday launch? You know, do they, do they forego, you know, holding for 343 to do another Halo? I think they probably have to at this point. You know, that Halo was such a big undertaking, they're not gonna crank that thing out right away. But then it becomes, you know, what's the, what is the selling point? Like, what gets you excited about a new Xbox? You look at the fidelity of the games that are out right now. When we were talking about the VGA awards, like these games look great right now on 1080p displays. How are you going to show enough delta of, wow, that looks so much more amazing, I got to have it today? No, that's a great point, I think, because you know, last time we took this huge leap from standard definition to high definition. Uh, you know, Nintendo's just done that. But you look now, you know, even the highest end PC games, which are sometimes, you know, a bellwether of sort of where gaming is going to go. And in a broad sense, Glenn, I mean, as a developer, what excites you about, you know, more power? I mean, is it that the graphics are going to get that much more real? The physics are going to get better? Or, I mean, wh where do you see generally gaming going in the future? Well, I would assume that the graphics can uh, get get better. Right. Um, I would imagine that we'll be, we would be able to, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that we could fit a lot more on these uh, right. machines, so maybe, maybe more animation. Um, there's always technology. How do you feel sort of like even now in the current system, how do you feel sort of restricted in terms of things that you guys want to do? Like the levels can't be big enough or what? Oh, we're always hitting restrictions. Okay. Yes, yeah, we, yeah, yeah we, hit them, we hit them all the time. And I, I think that's uh, uh, one of the things that people, people don't realize, you know, when they say, well, what could the next machines get? And we're like, Please, whatever you are, be bigger, be, you know, hold more because we would love. Well, developers to put more always stuff. want, you know, the most RAM, the most graphics. Yeah, yeah. Power. Well, you wouldn't believe what the levels look like, you know, when we, we, we build a level and then it's running at four frames a second, you know, right. we have to just, you know, pull stuff out. And, you know, I think the acting is going to get better. We've talked about that earlier. We'd like to fit in more, more audio, things like that. Right. So. There's a lot we can do. But to Garnet's point, you know, there was this leap from SD to HD. Yeah, yeah. And now, I mean, you know, there was talk about, you know, 3D becoming a big thing, which I don't think it has uh, become as big as some people thought that might be, you know, the next big thing. So, I mean, what do we think, it, Shane, what do you think is the next sort of leap going to be? Or is, is the jury out on that? I think it's going to have to be gameplay. Right. And I think that's where Nintendo is on the right foot with the Wii U, is it has provided new opportunities to interface with digital entertainment in new ways. Yeah. Um, but to me, I don't think the graphics push is going to be enough. I mean, you're asking people to, they're probably going to cost, you know, $400, I'm guessing, the new machines. You're asking someone to shell out 400 bucks, and you're like, what am I getting here? Oh, the graphics are better. Well, really, because the average person looking at a PC game versus looking at the best PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 games has a problem seeing the difference between those games. We see it, obviously, because we live and breathe this stuff. When you're talking about hitting mass market with a piece of electronics, you have to start thinking about that lowest common denominator. And so if you have a person who can't see a huge difference between the graphics and they're saying, okay, well, what else do I get? And you're like, well, here's the same controller you played with for the last seven years. Um, here's the same TV. It, it starts to make it more difficult to sell it. It's gonna have to be some type of a gameplay innovation, I believe, that's going to have to really spark this next generation. Well, I think that's a great point that, you know, in this generation, we've seen, you know, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PC, basically being, you know, three systems of parity. I, mean, I think we see some PC games that run a little bit faster, a little bit better, but Xbox and PlayStation, you really can't tell the difference between. And that's, At least know, not now. At first, right. you Absolutely. could, but not now. But now I feel it's like the same, so you wonder, you know, in the next generation, are these systems going to be that much different? And if so, will it you know, really reduce itself down to you know, which system has the best software and services and the best mm -hmm. OS and things like that around it? Because I know even playing with the Wii U, I mean, where you're waiting you know, 20 or 30 seconds to load a menu and things like that, 
uh, you know, you take for granted how quick you can do things on an iPad, and that may be a big focus, I would think, for you know, Microsoft and Xbox, because even now, it's like if I want to go from HBO Go to Call of Duty, I got to quit out of three menus, I got to go to the apps menu, load it up, and it's like if you can just you know, move around inside of the box, things like that could make a big difference. Well, I think this is, a, we're talking about Microsoft here, and I think that they agree with you 1,000%. They, I think they do think that it's going to be the services and the OS that really drive sales next generation, but I don't agree with that. I think it's going to be the games. It's going to be the exclusive games that you can only get on those platforms. Uh, we mentioned earlier third parties have pretty much bailed on that idea. They need to release their games across all the platforms. Yes. Sony has stayed basically on target. You know, they still are creating a lot of exclusive games for the PlayStation brands. Yep. Nintendo, obviously, same deal. But then when you get to Microsoft, you've seen over the last couple of years, they've really weaned off of exclusive games. I mean, this year, again, we got another Forza. Yep. Uh, and we get like a fable for the, I mean, it, <laughs> it has been a really bad year for exclusive games for the Xbox 360. And the year before that wasn't that much better. So it looks to me like Microsoft has kind of turned its back on the strategy that it probably should be following, which is try to get exclusive content. Really invest in big right. exclusive titles in the first party studio. Right. Yeah, no, you look at that compared to Sony, which we'll get to, I mean, an amazing array of, you know. But stuff. on the other hand, look how successful they've been this generation. Right. And they built a lot of that success on live, right? And we talk about this in terms of hardware, but maybe we should think of it as terms of a platform holder. And as a platform holder, if I'm Microsoft, I'm looking at live and knowing that I need a new live experience to launch with a new console. Because live's gotten dated. I mean, look, we like it for what it does, but it's long in the tooth. How awkward is it that in, in 2013 we would still be pulling up you know, that awkward blade thing? Because the blade's giving me information that the regular UI can't give me because the user experience is so messed up. That's a great point with you know, friends lists and you look at like, you know, uh, you know, how we treat social media with you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter it's and how that's all light years since up. when this thing was invented. And, and, and if anything, you know, they're still sort of just like carrying along the weight of the first Xbox. You know, we've reached 10 years in, in live. Well, okay, guys, it's time to give us a new live. You want a new platform? That's your new platform. And that's where their strength has been. All right, guys, we'll be right back after this.